Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you with a weekly podcast, which I call the Common Sense MD. Remember, there's not enough common sense in medicine these days. Um, So at Performance Medicine, we're able to think outside the box, do a little more research, and try to use preventive medicine rather than just writing you a script for the diagnosis we just gave you. So we dive into things a little bit deeper and try to use common sense with a lot of things that we do. Um, Today, I'm going to talk about something that I did actually did a podcast on this last year, but it's so important, I want to revisit it. And I'm going to call this podcast The Amazing Methylene Blue Revisited. Um, So methylene blue, which is something most doctors have probably never even heard about. Every ER doctor has heard about it, but in primary care, maybe not so much. Um, Anyway, methylene blue, which you think about it as being a dye, which it is, is perhaps the oldest modern medicine that there is. It was discovered in the late 1860s by these textile chemists that were, I guess, figuring out how to dye blue jeans. Um, So, but they were chemists, so they like to research things and use the microscope a lot. So what they found was methylene blue was good at putting on a slide and staining, using a stain. If you've ever gone to college and done biochemistry or even chemistry when you put something under a microscope it needs to have a stain on it to highlight the different things like different parts of a cell or living organisms anyway so what they found out was this is a good way to stain things to look under the microscope and they were able to identify a parasite under that microscope with this stain called plasmodium. For those that know what that is, that's the organism, the parasite that causes malaria. Um, So they were able to identify malaria with that. And what was even more amazing, they noticed that this stain killed the plasmodium. So it was a cure for malaria. Um, So... And it also killed bacteria and viruses. Um, So it was really the first medicine to treat viruses, bacteria, and parasites. As a matter of fact, that's where hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine are derived from methylene blue. Um, So it's been known for many years that it's an amazing medicine. Every ER doc knows where it's at because it immediately reverses carbon monoxide poisoning and also cyanide poisoning Um, so every er doc knows where it is and you give it iv in that matter it reverses something called met hemoglobinemia uh, where oxygen gets displaced Uh, so it it definitely saves lives Um, and also it reverses many chemical poisonings Um, But it's also very effective because it kills bacteria at treating and preventing recurrent urinary tract infections. Um, It improves energy. It improves oxygenation, therefore breathing, um, especially when exercising um, by improving mitochondrial respiration. You know, we talk a lot about the mitochondria, the energy uh, parts of every cell that ATP is derived from. Um, But I started using it for COVID, not only for COVID, but for long hauler COVID, because a lot of people have a hard time with breathing after having COVID, Um, along with LDN. It's a really good outside the box treatment for um, long COVID. But what really interested me was its effects on treating Alzheimer's dementia. Um, you know, and I really started looking at it because I noticed that when I was treating the long COVID, probably the main symptom of long COVID is brain fog and it immediately improves brain fog in these patients. Um, but remarkably, this substance has been shown to prevent beta amyloid plaques from forming on the outside of neurons and it helps prevent tau that protein 
that's very inflammatory and these neurofibrillary tangles that result there is a result of tau um, it's just interesting to look at the studies one study in I think it was 2019 showed treatment um, on real Alzheimer's patients before that it's mostly been treatments with mice methylene blue reduced cognitive decline by 85 um, percent and it's interesting when they used the drugs currently approved for Alzheimer's which don't work the effects of the methylene blue disappeared um, so it's really interesting. All these treatments for Alzheimer's are targeted towards reducing the amyloid plaque that's already there. This works on preventing uh, that plaque from forming. Um, and it worked especially be best when combined with photodynamic therapy, red lights. Um, a lot of these studies came out of the University of Texas where this Ph.D., um, his whole life has been studying methylene blue for the last 30 years. And uh, he's really uh, a devotee of methylene blue. And you should listen to some of his podcasts. He's really interesting. Um, but when you look at methylene blue with these PET scans and functional MRIs, methylene blue immediately crosses a blood-brain barrier. It gets into your brain really quickly. Um, it's also thought to help Parkinson's um, disease, which is the fastest-growing neurologic disorder in this country. Um, and it's interesting because methylene blue is a nitric oxide inhibitor. Uh, you know, we're taught to believe that nitric oxide um, was great for aging and athletic performance. Maybe not. This theory has been kind of disproven because, in fact, nitric oxide, is it's a pretty toxic free radical so we're changing a lot of thinking about this because methylene blue is a direct no inhibitor um, so nitric oxide may be responsible for cell neuron death or so remember that not that it doesn't have some other useful things but um, you know you need to take care of your brain first before you take care of anything else um, a study out of the University of Texas recently showed that a single dose of methylene blue is able to increase the response um, of brain regions that control attention and memory. Um, again, they use functional MRIs to study this thing uh, along with short-term memory tasks. I've had a couple patients tell me that their first dose, they, they immediately started feeling better. Uh, so definitely helps your attention span you know i really haven't tried it much for add but i assume it will probably work for that as well um so it seems that methylene blue works for dementia but it works definitely best when used early you know i talk a lot about prevention of these neurodegenerative diseases which is what is important because it's very difficult when that disease process gets away from you very difficult to reverse it um, so you need to treat it before all the damage is done. Um, there's some recent studies out of Germany in mice that suggest that it can stop both Alzheimer's and frontotemporal dementia um, in its tracks, but only in the earliest stages. You know, they have ways of inducing these diseases in mice. Um, there's not, not as many um, human studies yet on this. Um, because, you know, it's dirt cheap. I mean, it's inexpensive over-the-counter dye. If you take it, of course, you need to get the, the pharmaceutical grade. Um, but in a recent journal of neuroscience published in PubMed, um, a study found that daily consumption of methylene blue retench, reduces attention deficits and also dopamine reduction in Parkinson's you know Parkinson's is a reduction of dopamine in your brain it's a movement problem which can also lead to cognitive decline in the end um, it's just hard for me to believe that most doctors don't know the advantages of this it's probably because you know it's not going to be researched to the hilt and and all by big pharma because they you know it's off patent it's over the counter they're not going to make any money off of it um, 
So it's an over-the-counter, inexpensive drug. I take it. Um, we use it in the form of liquid drops. Uh, the dose is important. So you need to come. If you get on it, you probably ought to come see us. To The other thing I do is usually check something called a G6PD. It's not an absolute because that's a rare disease that you have a glucose G6PD deficiency. Um but it's out there, so academically, you probably ought to do it. But it's over the counter. People have been doing it for years um, off label, so I don't worry about it a whole lot. Um, it's a very safe drug, especially in the doses that we use. You know, we're not using it IV um, in an emergency room for carbon monoxide poisoning. It's useful for that, and they need it. But what we're talking about is, is use in oral drops for a completely different reason. Um, you know, they, they, pregnant women should not use this. Definitely. You should not use this for pregnant women. Um, and I used to think it was contraindicated, uh, for people that were on SSRIs like Prozac and Zoloft and these things, because it is a mild MAO inhibitor. Um, but really when I did a deep search on this, it was it, this only occurred in very high doses when they were tagging the parathyroid glands during surgery. And I think that was five cases of people on high dose uh, Zoloft or Prozac. So you're not going to get these kind of doses. So it's an overblown thing. So you don't re you may, you probably need to warn the patients that are on these medicines that if they get um, if they feel really bad on it, stop it, of course, and let us know. But I've never seen this, and I don't think many people have seen this. Um, this serotonin syndrome thing seems to be overblown in a lot of ways with other things as well. But um, and, and there's a possible contraindication for people with G6PD deficiencies, which we check a lot anyway because when we give high-dose IV vitamin C, we need to do that to prevent hemolytic anemia. Again, I've only seen one case of this deficiency around here. It's more common in other uh, continents, but we still check for it. And so it's not a bad idea to get it checked. Um, but again, it's really rare. Um, but if you're going to get a higher dose um, or get a high dose IV vitamin C, then you ought to get this G6PD blood test, which is a one time deal, cheap, inexpensive test that you ought to think about getting. But so this methylene blue is it's really inexpensive, it's safe. The dose you need to come talk to us about, um, and we need to follow your progress with this. But it's really exciting to me the many uses that this drug, which is the first drug known to man in modern times, really, um, certainly way before penicillin or insulin were discovered, um, it has a lot of uses. And it's just since COVID has been out there that it's really come more to light. But I'm so interested in it for cognition because that's the thing people fear the worst is these neurodegenerative diseases that I talk about a lot. Um, so think about methylene blue. You know, do your own research and uh, come to us if you want to talk about it and maybe get tested uh, for the G6PD deficiency and maybe some guidance on how to use this. But anyway, I hope this helps. I'll see you next week. This is Dr. Tom Rogers. Mm -hmm.